Okay, we're looking at cells, DNA, and protein synthesis. Quick revision of these bits, not going to spend a huge amount of time on them. Uh, so let's have a look at some uh, animal and plant cells. You should remember this stuff from a long time ago. Um, okay, first of all, let's look at the little uh, membrane there. <clears throat> What's the function of the membrane? The function of the cell membrane is to control what moves in and out of the cell, essentially. Uh, moving on, cytoplasm, that's where all the chemical reactions take place. That's where all the cell organelles do their thing, where the main business of the uh, of the cell takes place. Nucleus, the nucleus contains the chromosomes. The chromosomes are made of DNA. So the job of the nucleus is to control the cell. It basically sends information out to all the little machines, the little biological machines in the cytoplasm. It's the, the nucleus sends information out to them and tells them what to do, how to do it, how much of it to make, and so on and so forth. So that really is the business part of the cell. And then in a the plant cell, you've got a few bits and bobs that you wouldn't find in an animal cell. We've got the chloroplast, which does photosynthesis. So there's that green pigment chlorophyll in there. We've got the vacuole. Now the vacuole is where the, the cell sap is stored. Um, we're talking about sort of water and sugar, really. And then we've got the cell wall. And the cell wall gives the cell structure, it gives it shape and strength. If you put a red blood cell into pure water, it would burst. It's called hemolysis, hemolysis. But if you put a plant cell into water, it wouldn't. And that's because a plant cell has got this very tough cell wall. So there we are. How do you go about making one of these things? You do a swab. You can get um, one of these little cotton buds, swab it around the inside of your mouth, and then rub that onto a, um, a little slide, a little microscope slide. Now you've got your cells on there, but you can't see anything until you stain it. You had to add this stain, um, and that stain will be taken up by the nucleus and some other organelles inside the cell, and that will make you able to see it. <coughs> so let's have a look at the sort of thing. There we are. That's what a cell really looks like <coughs> under a microscope. So you can make out the, the, the membrane and the nucleus, um, but we won't spend too much time looking at that. Mitochondria. This is one of the cell organelles, one of the machines inside the cells. What do they do? What do mitochondria do? They are um, involved in producing energy, in respiration. This is where respiration takes place. Okay. Um, and cells or tissues that are very sort of demanding need a lot of energy, like muscle cells. If you're doing some exercise, muscle cells will need a lot of energy. They'll use a lot of glucose and oxygen up you'll find lots and lots of mitochondria in there. And it's for this, it's for uh, respiration, which is extremely important that you know. You know the equation for this and you understand it. Uh, our cells use glucose and oxygen, and they produce carbon dioxide and water as a byproduct. And what do we get? We get this thing called ATP, and that's basically energy. Okay, ATP is, is um, it's, it's like a molecule that stores energy. And you can take it to any part of your body and use it there. Okay, so that's the respiration equation. If you didn't know that already, you must learn it. And the symbol equation, and balance it if you can. <clears throat> okay, one of the other cell organelles, the machinery of the cells, is a thing called a ribosome. Now, a ribosome has two units. It's got a large subunit and a small subunit. All they are is basically, it's like a vice. Its, it's job is to hold something called mRNA. <clears throat> now, I'll, I'll tell you what that is in a second. But the ribosome is where the amino acids are joined together to form long chain proteins. Okay. There's a lot of information there. So proteins are made from things called amino acids. And all the ribosome does is it holds this all together. It holds everything together so that it can be made. Um, that will become a little bit more clear later. What do we find inside the nucleus? Let's go back to the nuclear material. We find chromosomes. So what you've got here, you've got a pair of chromosomes here, one pair of chromosomes. <coughs> and um, this is where you find the genes. The genes are on the chromosomes. And you, if you, you could unpick a chromosome, and you'd find that it was made up of DNA. The chromosomes are made of DNA. Here, we've got a thing called a karyotype. This is all 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, this one's female. No, it's not. This one's male in the bottom right hand corner in the bottom right hand corner you can see one long chromosomes one long chromosome and one short one um, that's an X and a Y so that's a male a set of male chromosomes and what you've got there 
is a huge amount of DNA, enough DNA to code for an entire human. 3.2 billion base pairs. How's it organized? Okay, start at the top with a picture of the cell. Inside the cell we have a nucleus. Inside the nucleus you have a bunch of chromosomes. Now remember, common exam question, let's say um, if a certain animal has 20 um, chromosomes in its liver cells, how many chromosomes has it got in its sperm or egg cells? Well, it would be half, wouldn't it? It would be 10. So always half the number of chromosomes for your gametes. And by gametes, I mean sperm and egg. <clears throat> right, you can unpick a chromosome into this thread-like structure, and that's DNA. And DNA is made of base pairs <clears throat> with a, a phosphate backbone to it, but you don't need to know that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we've got a picture of DNA here. The red one is thymine, the green one is adenine. We don't use those words, we just say A and T, or T and A. A's and T's go together because the shape, it, it just fits. You can see in this diagram that the pointy red shape fits into the, <laughs> the, the, the correct slot on the green one. And cytosine and guanine go together, so C's and G's. So T's always paired with A's and C's always paired with G. Uh, and then it just curls up into this sort of ladder-like structure, this um, double helix, they call it. It was discovered um, by Watson and Crick, with a little bit of help from a few other people, uh, using a method called X-ray crystallography. But you don't need to know a lot about that, so don't worry. <coughs> right. Let's talk about protein synthesis. Protein synthesis. Stage one of protein synthesis. So how do we make protein? Well, we begin with an enzyme called DNA helicase, and it's basically a zip. It's like the zip on your on your coat. It moves down DNA and it unzips it. And those A's, T's, C's and G's, those bases, <coughs> they come apart. And they're, they're, they're sort of, they're free. You can see them now. <coughs> um, stage two of protein synthesis is mRNA formation. Right, what is mRNA? The M stands for messenger and it's RNA, not DNA. In it's RNA, you don't need to worry about this because it, it's a single strand. So, as you can see on this picture, we've got this unwound section of DNA. And the bases are free, you can see them. Now, floating around in the, the nucleoplasm, in the nucleus, there are free bases. <clears throat> and they can pair with, with the open, one of the open stretches, one of the free stretches. Um, now, you might notice here that A is pairing with U. We haven't covered you. The rule is, in mRNA, in messenger RNA, you do not get any T's. Um, U is more stable than T, um, but just accept at this stage that there are no T's, there's no thymine in, in mRNA. <coughs> so A goes with U, T goes with A as normal, C, G and C go together as normal. Okay. So what we've got is we've got this little template. This mRNA is a little template molecule of this code. Now that this code is an instruction. It's an instruction like build keratin or build the hemoglobin or build this kind of molecule. So we've got this little molecule, this mRNA molecule, which is a piece of genetic information that's going to move out of the nucleus to a ribosome. And that's what's going to be read for protein synthesis. Okay. So complementary bases pair with the template strand, forming a molecule of messenger RNA. Next step, protein synthesis, stage three. <clears throat> messenger RNA moves out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore. And here comes that ribosome with the small and the big subunits. They move together like a vise and they hold on to the messenger RNA. <clears throat> what comes next? Stage four. Next, don't worry, it's getting complicated, but this is the last bit. We've got our large and our small subunits holding the messenger RNA there with its U, T, A, G, C, so on, the code that we want. <clears throat> and next thing is something called a tRNA, a transfer RNA, comes along and it docks with three of those bases. So it might dock with a, a UGG, let's say. And if the base pairing is complementary, this is what we call a triplet, these three. So what would go with, what would go with UGG? 
you try and work that out. You you pause the video and tell me what would go with UGG on the tRNA side. These tRNAs have got amino acids attached to them. If the tRNA docks at the appropriate three bases, the appropriate triplet codon, then it sticks to it <clears throat> and it attaches its amino acid to the last one. And then the next three are read by the next tRNA and if it's correct, it attaches and it sticks that amino acid to the previous one. And it goes along being read. The ribosome moves along this strand of messenger RNA like a conveyor belt attaching and the tRNAs attach the amino acid to this long, long chain. This long chain of amino acids is the primary protein structure. This is going to become a protein. It needs a little bit more work doing to it, but that's this is protein formation. <coughs> okay. This is a tRNA molecule. Okay, it's made of bases just like the mRNA and the DNA. And at the bottom we've got this thing called an anticodon. Now this is the important bit. So this, this tRNA, it docks and it's the anticodon, the CAU, which, which tries to bind with the base triplet on the mRNA. If it doesn't fit, it will just move away and nothing will happen and that amino acid won't fit. You have to get the correct sequence to match the mRNA triplet for it to stick that amino acid onto the, onto the previous one. Okay, so that's the anticodon. Okay, complicated that. There are some good videos on protein synthesis on YouTube. Um, it is complicated, but it's one of those things that you're just gonna have to learn. Right, now it's your turn. <clears throat> have a look at these questions. See if you can answer them. Press pause now, and then come and have a look at the answers and see how you did. Okay, good luck.